Hi everyone. Uh, if you were on in the last minute or two, I took a little bit getting started because for some reason I seem to have a small bit of connection problems today. So fingers crossed that it runs smoothly as the um, as the live goes on. Even though it's only been a couple of weeks, it feels like a lot longer since I've been on a live. Um, you may have noticed that what we've started doing is I'm trying to roll it into every two weeks. Um, but in between, what I've been doing is the vlogs on YouTube. So it means that we kind of get a little bit of variety of comments of content and things like that. Um, hey, from Western New York, nice to see you. It's the best part about the lives is I actually get to see people popping up and you can talk to me because of course that is the benefit of a live. But sometimes by doing it every other week, I can gather up the content and give you a lot to talk about. And in between lives, if you've got questions that pop up or things that you want to talk about and talk through, you can fit them in. But in the meantime, make sure you pop over to my YouTube as well and you can subscribe on there and you won't miss any of the vlogs. So they tend to be slightly longer term, uh, longer form content and I tend to go into more the nitty gritty and a bit more details than I often would in live. Hello from North Wales. <laughs> Is I haven't. I don't think anyone has popped up before and said they were from Wales. It's not saying the people weren't there, but I haven't seen it come up before. So this week, the um, I, well, I should say last week. Reason I was not here is I was actually away teaching in Park Nasilla, and it has been a while since I had a full week where I was away to retreat. It was a lot of fun. I really enjoyed starting off with a group of knitters, getting to know everyone, and then by the time we were finished, um, really feel you have a connection. Because you know when you start in a group like that, no one really knows each other or what to expect. And the first night, everyone is kind of looking over their shoulder, if they're, if, particularly if you're alone. And so by the time you reach the end of a week, there's just, just lovely bond formed between everyone. I will have another retreat next year. I haven't got the dates up yet. Um, at the end of this week, or probably starting next week, I'll pop them up, but I'll make sure to tell you about them when they're up there. Um, but it will be down in the same spot. Hey, Nicole from California. Else Louise, you like the latest vlog. Oh, good. I'm glad you liked it. It, it is kind of enjoyable um, breaking up the content. So it, it still means there's video, new video content every week. It's just not in the same format. So I, the, the plan as we've kind of evolved it is to do the Instagram lives every second week and the vlogs in between. Because what was happening is I was trying to double up and do so much each week and it was getting quite overwhelming. So this gives it a nice bit of a pace, but I'm in front of the camera and chatting with you every week at the same time. So yeah, the, it was very good last week be away teaching, but I, I took me until about today to recuperate. Part of it may have been, I don't know if I picked up a slight bug when I was down there, but I've just been really tired and below par. But today, even with poor sleep last night, I feel like energy levels are bouncing right back up there and I'm starting to feel a little bit more like myself, which is a really, really nice feeling. I'm sure all of you know what it feels like when you're just off warm. You can hear my voice is a small but croaky, several days of talking and, um, and I definitely had a slightly off voice. The one thing I want to make sure I talk about before we finish up is, of course, or before we start, I should say, is all about clue two of our, our Hawthorne Knit Along. So hopefully any of you are in the Knit Along. You can give me a wave there. If you, if you are, let me know how you're getting on. Um, clue one's now finished. Obviously, you can keep working away at your own pace, but clue two was just released this morning. So this part kind of gets a bit more interesting. We've got some shaping because the first clue was clue one. We'd started with the hem working up separately, first of all, and then working in the round up to the armholes. And now we're dividing the front and the back and working on the back. It never ceases to amaze me. And I am so impressed with all of you knitters out there, the speed you knit with. Because I'm designing as I'm going through and I'm putting it down and picking it up and thinking it through, I tend to not knit through things very quickly. So when I actually see people flying through it, I am just incredible. Uh, I, I just cannot get over how well people work through it. It's just phenomenal. Oh, I'd realized as well, I didn't bring it up here, but maybe I'll save it for the next time, um, the Soren cardigan that I had been working on. I'll talk about that when we get back around to it in a second. But let's talk about this clue. 
first one you've obviously got your sand stitch and it works slightly differently depending on if you're going flat or in the round so when you start off first of all down here it's in the flat you've got extra stitches in the side then you join it together you decrease it then you're working in the round so you're working in the round directions when you come up and you're separating front and back you're back to working flat so you have to make sure that you keep on the right row of the pattern so if you finished one with the row two the next uh, row if it's in the wrong side row is going to be row three or i should say round here row here so it means that the pattern is going to look the same from the front and that's why i'm so specific as to which pattern row or which one of the pattern rows you around you end up finishing on because otherwise it's not going to match up so if you can see it here You've got, this is my favorite part actually, the fact that you've got these ribbing up the side and it makes, it really emphasizes the seam lines because the ribbing just creates this very, very interesting effect. And that's all, just all from the mistake rib. It's much more subtle than your standard ribbing because if you had standard ribbing here, it's going to be a lot more dramatic, but mistake rib is much, much subtler. Um, so along here, we initially had just a little bit of decreases in here and a little bit in here. Bigger sizes, more decreases, but those ones are all sloping with the body, so they're leaning in the direction of the work, so it's kind of creating a clean lineup. They're all double. The reason they're double is because the sand stitch is a multiple of two stitches. If you decrease two at the same time, that means that you're always going to maintain your stitch pattern. It makes it so much easier, because if you just do one, then you're going to be jogging over, and you have to remember which stitch you are in the stitch pattern, get rid of two and the repeat stays the same. So it makes it way easier when you do double decreases. So that's why we brought double decreases in. It means there's much less. So there's two done over here, two over here. For the first few sizes, there's very little because you only want, to, it's not a set in sleeve. It's just to tidy it in a little bit, just to bring it in a small bit. So there's a small bit more shaping at the armhole, but it is definitely not a shaped armhole. It's just a little bit to bring it in then you work straight up along here. This is the point where you finish working straight. It's gonna be the same on both sides. And at that point, you're going to have really, really dramatic decreases across the shoulder. See all of this shaping across here? And let me pull this back further. And this line sloping in here, that's all done with double decreases. Every right side, we're all the way up here. So what that forms from this point where you start it, up to this here is it creates that shoulder and all those stitches disappear. So when you get up to the top here, you've just got enough stitches for the back of your neck across here. And that means you can then just do a little bit of shaping and finish those off. So it's what stumped me when I was trying to figure out how to design this was actually how to create this lovely slope and do it seamlessly. And that's why in the end I opted to just do the decreases so I could get that really nice shaping and then just come back and seam this in afterwards. If you're knitting it, when you have finished to the point where you're working straight, which is this point here, you're gonna put a marker here and a marker in the same place over on the other side. And the reason you've done that is when you come back to seam, you're going to start on this side and finish on this side at the edge of the bind off and the front sections are all going to seam onto that. So that's the purpose of that, is it's going to give you that line that you want to seam the two together. So it's really important. But that's all we're going to be doing in clue two. It's just that back section, lots of decreases. And um, one of the things that did come up with the tester was the fact that I've got two different directions of decrease. The ones at the armhole come in this way. These ones here are what I've heard referred to as fully fashioned, but really what it means is you're going against the direction of the decrease. The decreases are working this way, but the slope of each decrease is that way. So what it creates is like these lines heading up this way, and it, create, it makes a very interesting effect for, can I move it up here a little closer? Let's see if you can see that. So this lines across here going into here is what I mean by that. Um, and they work best up at the top of the shoulders because then it creates a very, very interesting effect coming in along here. I thought that it was because the underarm, you can't see them and I wanted it to be a bit more subtle. I just kept it in line. So it just continues on with the slope of this. But that did throw some of the testers out. The fact that I've got ones going this way and the ones at the shoulder going this way. It's correct and there is a reason for it. But 
as I always say with knitting, you can make your own judgment call. If you much prefer these or you much prefer those, you can swap around which you want. So one of them is a knit three together, the other one's an SSSK, which you're going to slope in, in each direction. If you prefer one effect over the other, or you just like the idea of them being the same, then just swap them around. So that's in your hands. You get to decide which way you want to. I would just suggest that you make sure you mirror it. Don't make one going this way and the other one a straight line, because that will look a little bit strange. But you can definitely take what's down here and what's up there and change it around. Now, if you want to jump in and actually join the Hawthorne Knit Along, but you're finding several of the colors are out of stock, we have we do have a little bit of stock coming in. I would have expected it today, but things are a little slow coming in for the UK. Um, I think between parcel strikes and custom fees coming in here, everything tends to get a little bit delayed. There are a couple of colors that are coming in, but there are um, chalk and plum and uh, dare you are both out of stock but I think most of the other colors we probably have if you want to make sure that we hold on to color for you when it comes in if there's something you're waiting for and you're not seeing it or even if there is one of the colors we have in stock and worsted but we haven't made a kit for it just go ahead and send us on a message um, just in the chat section on our website or just direct message us here on Instagram and we're really happy to just set something aside or send you on an invoice or whatever makes the most sense for you. But they are all available. The other thing that I didn't come on here to talk about last week, but I did have the live, or the YouTube uh, happen for, was um, our Chunky Knits collection. I, I will come in in a few weeks and talk a little bit more about that because I very foolishly, I'm in the office by myself and all of the knits are downstairs because I did not forward plan. There's a couple over there that I can grab and tell you about, but the one that probably was the most interesting, Sorn, is downstairs. So the yarns that we used are, let me go around the corner, I'm just gonna grab a couple. Um, I have, of course, just got the yarn here. This is the Sorn yarn we used. It was a soft Donegal. And this is the color that it was in. It's this is the it's the dark gray. There's actually quite you can see it's kind of a knit, there's also kind of an, a little oshi, slightly browny color in with it. But it's a chunky weight yarn in Donegal. Fantastic mix because of the fact that you've got two things going on here. You've got a merino yarn, so it is soft, but because it's woolen spun, as in the actual um uh, the way it's spun in Donegal doesn't smooth it all out in one way, traps a lot of air, so it's actually quite light. So it's a very interesting mixture. It's, it's warm, soft, and kind of light, not quite as smooth as you would fully expect from a merino, but I think it's because of the fact that it's all of the fibers aren't smoothed down. But I actually think it's a good trade-off because you get a nice bit of lightness for it. So you don't get the usual density you would expect from a chunky yarn. So definite advantage. Um, the Barack cardigan, again, I will, I swear, next time round, I'm going to bring them up here with me. But I've left, I've left them downstairs. I don't know where they are. But I do have the Barack cardigan, the first version. It was designed as a learn to knit cardigan. So this is the first Barack, which is done in Franca. Um, very, I might actually just put it on so I can show you. Um, so it is a super chunky um, from Maniston, Uruguay, Franca. And it is butter soft, but it is warmer because it's a heavier yarn and it's very fast. Top down, just a single button here. And it's got just these, you can see it really clearly because I'm wearing black underneath. You can see the increases are done yarn overs on each side of a single stitch, same on the back. And then it's just got a tiny little bit of, um, I suppose lace, there's a double decrease, uh, or double, yeah, double decrease and an increase in each side, just for a little bit of interest can be left off if you want to plain but this was a really good way of learning how to do top down knitting because it is very fast very chunky yarn and there's a full workshop so if you need if you've never seen this happen and you can't picture how you remove sleeves or how you would take those and join it and it just doesn't logically make sense you can see it all happening within the video so I know that the first time I knit a raglan top down it was it was about 12 years ago, maybe 14 years ago. 
and I was reading the directions and I couldn't, vi in, I couldn't just visualize the whole thing. Like I eventually got through, but it took quite a bit. So if I can make the job easier for you, if you haven't done it before and you can just see what's happening, it will make it so much easier. And then you're away with it, you'll fly along. This is the super chunky one, but the version I've put any, if you get the pattern, comes in two versions, super chunky and the chunky. And it's knit using the Donegal chunky and quite a loose gauge. So it's surprisingly wearable, chunky, but loosely knit. And I wore it quite a few times last week. It was kind of perfect over dresses or jeans or things like that, very usable cardigan. Um, you've got some 100% new wool Donegal tweed. It's so scratchy. Will it soften up after washing? Washing, Yeah, most of the time they will. Um, I'd suggest just doing a little, these ones are not scratchy because they're merino. The original um, Donegal tweed is a slightly, um, it's not going to be quite as soft because it's not a merino yarn. All of them will bloom and soften with washing and will continue to soften with washing. So if you're, before you start anything extensive with this, do a swatch, soak, wash, see it bloom and get a feel for what it's going to feel like after you've washed it. Um, but this will be kind of a different kettle of fish. And the other cardigan that's also in Chunky that I've done, you might have a look through my feed and you'll actually, um, you'll see it. This, that one is also a top down raglan. There's also a workshop there if you need it but it is top down with um, a combination of reverse stockinette stitch, stockinette stitch, and then ribbing across the back. And the part that took me ages was I had a raised collar that went around as well, um, that because there was an I-cord edging and this was picked up and worked in the opposite direction, it took quite a bit because I did it the first time round and I'm like, that's not quite right. And then the next time I put the stitches up from the wrong side, but third time was charm. And I just reversed the direction of the I cord is and I worked them on the other side and it made a really big difference. So, um, yeah, the Soren has definitely proved very popular, I think, because it's super cozy and it's got this lovely big raised collar. So they were all came out um, about a week ago and it was, yeah, they were worked on for a while behind the scenes. Anyone, in fact, who was watching me, I think it was last Christmas or last January, I began it because it was my Christmas knit. And it was plugging along in the background. And I know Elsa Louise, you were asking me for about four months when it was going to come. And then it reached a point that it was ready at, uh, more or less at the start of the summer, but it was a chunky knit. So generally speaking, you don't release chunky knit patterns at the start of the summer. You wait till the autumn time when people want to wear them. But it meant that I had time to finish off the workshop, get it well tested and things like that. So it was probably a good thing to have a nice uh, stretch of time between finishing and bringing it out. Um, I don't know if any of you have been following along a few of the chats here on Instagram, also on Facebook and on Twitter. We've been talking a lot about circular knitting and um, what your preferences are and also even fixing it. So like I've had, like I spend a lot of time talking about how to get things right, but things don't always go correctly. Sometimes you need a little bit of help in fixing things. So if you need help in things like how do you fix a cable? If something has been miscrossed and you need to drop it down, then you can actually just pop on into our website. And if you go to the how to sections down to tutorials or to knit basics, but these ones are going to be in tutorials, you can find out how you can fix a miscrossed cable. Also, very useful one is how to fix a brioche because that is something I've heard a lot of people talk about that if you run into a problem with brioche that that is where you reach the point where oh, I don't like brioche because I cannot figure out how to fix it so that video should be a big help it's done in two colors with it's actually some of this yarn but super chunky yarn so you can really see what's going on and I show you how you make it as safe as possible and can easily pick it up and there's also a little bit of discussion about um, lace and yarn overs. And if you missed a yarn over, how you sort that through just in the more general lace section. So if you haven't gone to my website before to take a look at the tutorials, particularly in relation to fixing mistakes, I would encourage you to pop over and have a little look in there today. You never know what you find um, and you can just save the page for yourself. So you can jump back over and you have it there the next time you run into the problem. Um, but I think that's probably it for me today. I will talk a bit more about the other chunky cardigans the next time I'm on here. 
Um, and in the meantime, don't forget to hop over to YouTube and you can subscribe there and that way you're not going to miss the vlogs when they come out next. Elsa Louise, um, you were just saying you had, you figured out what it was from the rib in the back. <laughs> That's right. You had been waiting for months for me to actually come and release that pattern. And it ended up getting sidelined because there was other things that came in, in ahead of it. And it was definitely a winter knit. But you're all set now. You get to actually sit down and make it because I know you have been eagerly awaiting it. So enjoy that, Else Louise. And um, thank you, everyone, for joining me. Bye.